Uh, but first, I want to say something, if I, I could. Um, oh, no. <laughs> it's the word. All right, when I was 15 years old, I... I <laughs> all right, now, let me start over here. I wanted to be an artist when I was a kid, and I loved to draw. And every night after my parents went to bed, I would sit at my desk in my room, and I would draw and until it was very late. And while I was doing that, I would watch a television show that is very important to me, as you can tell. It was called Late Night with David Letterman. And uh, if you watch this... I collect myself in. If you watched it uh, without paying attention, it was a lot like The Tonight Show, starring Johnny Carson, in that they had guests in an audience and a uh, band. And, and, but it was weird. Even though it looked like every other talk show, it wasn't. It was totally original, primarily because uh, the host of the show, who a lot of the time seemed embarrassed to even be there, he did not seem like he was a part of show business. <laughs> he was uncomfortable. He never pretended to be excited. And his way of saying things was... Uh, so subtle that a lot of the time, the people he was talking to didn't know he was joking. This is a very small example, but a good one, I think. Dave once took a camera crew into a store that sold nothing but lampshades. The store was called Just Shades. And there was a huge sign out front that said, Just Shades. He walked in, and he asked a very serious woman who owned the store, so what can you get in here? And she said, what can you get in here? Shades. Just shades. And Dave said... But seriously, what can you get in here besides shades? And she said, nothing. And he said, have you ever thought about just going crazy and selling lamps also? <laughs> the woman said, no, never. We do not sell lamps, only shades. That is why our name is just shades. <laughs> it was like he had one of those tiny sized screwdrivers you use on eyeglasses and he was always just gently twisting a little screw all the time. And I loved it. I, lo I started drawing pictures of Dave on the covers of my textbooks at school. Uh, when I turned 16, we have a picture. Of, well, that's my Aunt Chippy. My mother baked me a late night with David Letterman cake. And I, you can see I'm wearing a Dave Letterman Letterman jacket. My first car, I went to the DMV and I got a late night vanity plate. That's my little brother wearing jams. He still wears them, by the way. <laughs> We had no VCR, so I'd have late night with David Letterman viewing parties at my house in the middle of the night. My friends, who also loved the show, Cleto was one of them, would come over at midnight. My parents would be asleep, and we'd drink soda and watch the show. Looking back, I've now figured out why none of the girls at school wanted to have sex with me. But I watched the show every night. I never missed it. And little did I know that many years and many pounds later, that watching the show was a great education for me. I learned almost nothing in college. I really did. But watching late night, not only did I learn how to do everything from Dave. The reason I have this show is, is, beca <laughs> is because the executives at ABC um, saw me when I was a guest on Dave's show and hired me to host this show. So I want to thank Dave and his writers and producers. <laughs> uh, I want to say... <laughs> this is great. He probably won't find his show. Tomorrow night is... Letterman's Farewell Show, and I would like it if you'd make sure to watch that instead of our show. We will have a show tomorrow night, it's going to be a rerun. Please do not watch it, especially if you're a young person who doesn't understand what all the fuss is about. Dave is the best, and you should see him. And, uh... <laughs> I want to, um... I want to show you a little piece of one of my favorite segments from the show. This is something that we would quote over and over again when we were kids. It's a parody of one of those after-school specials they used to run on all the major networks in the 70s and early 80s. I looked this up on YouTube the other day, and I think this sums up how I feel this week almost supernaturally well. Jimmy! Oh, Jimmy. Jimmy, Jimmy, I've been looking all over for you. Hey, hey, hold, hold on there. Jimmy, I know how you feel. You've heard at first, but... Believe me, you're going to get over it. You don't understand. Nobody does. Jimmy, just because a show is canceled doesn't mean it goes away forever. It can live on through reruns, syndication. You mean I might see Voyagers again? <laughs> well, yeah, maybe in some form or another. You know, Jimmy... I remember when they canceled Six Million Dollar Man. Boy, I thought my world was going to end. But then the Fall Guy premiered, and my prayers were answered. Sure, it was a different time, slightly different format, but I adjusted. 
And you know what? I grew a little in the process, too. <laughs> You know, Cleto, before I, we do this, I want to say Cleto Escobedo, our band leader, who I've known since I was nine years old, is very uncomfortable speaking in public. <laughs> we had a friend who got married. Cleto gave the single worst best man speech that has ever been given. <laughs> yes, yes, and I was true. a wedding DJ. I've seen hundreds of them. Oh, yeah. True, yes? Yes, sir. So what you're about to see is a bona fide act of love. Cleto would like to say something about his counterpart at the Late Show, the great uh, Paul Schaefer. So go ahead, Cleto. You have the <laughs> I've been watching and learning from Paul uh, since I was a kid, you know, never knowing that I'd end up here uh, with, this, with this job. And I think uh, any of us that are fortunate enough to have a job like this um, owe a lot to Paul, and uh, I believe he's the gold standard. You know, and he's been so generous and kind to us over the years that I, I'm just really going to miss seeing Paul and uh, his most dangerous band in my living room every night. So here's to you, Paul. Thank you. Fabulous. I am Jimmy Kimmel. If you like that, subscribe to our YouTube channel to get all our latest videos before they die and go to YouTube heaven.